30. Lifting Kane out of the egg chamber. When the face hugger latches onto Kane in the movie, the shot cuts directly to Dallas and Lambert transporting Kane to the Nostromo. According to Final Screenplay, there is a scene where Dallas and Lambert pull Kane out of the egg chamber with a wire. It is very likely that the scene was filmed, although no footage of the scene has been leaked to the public. According to Final Screenplay, the scene goes, Dallas, Kane, Kane, can you hear me? Lambert, what's the matter? Dallas, we better haul him out. Lambert, it'll yank him right off his feet if he's not expecting it. Dallas, try him again. Lambert, Kane, Kane, God damn it, answer me. Dallas begins to fiddle with the wench mechanism. Dallas, the line slack. Lambert, he doesn't answer. Lambert, do you think he could have unhooked himself? Dallas switches on the winch motor. With a whine, it begins to reel the line in. After a moment, the line tightens with a jerk. The motor slows, laboring under added weight. Dallas, it caught. Lambert, is it hooked on something? Dallas, no, it's coming. Lambert, I can't see anything. Dallas shines his light down into the hole, shakes his head. Dallas, line still moving. Dallas shines his light again. Dallas, here he comes. The winch labors heavily. Dallas, get ready to grab him. Kane appears at the top of the opening, dangles limply from the wire. Dallas reaches for him, then recoils. Dallas, look out. There's something on his face. Lambert attempts to help. Lambert, what is it? Kane appears to be completely unconscious. The life form is still wrapped motionless around his face. Lambert, oh Jesus. Dallas, don't touch it. They grapple with Kane's limp body, lift him from the hole. 31. The final screenplay depicts a scene in which Dallas and Lambert carry Kane out of the derelict ship. Entrance of the ship, Dallas begins to assemble Travois to pull Kane. When the trio is back within Ash's transmit range, Ripley immediately starts asking what has happened. On the way back, Dallas informs Ripley that Kane is injured. Dallas and Lambert haul Kane to the Nostromo using the Travoy. There is no leaked material available for this scene. 32. In the film, Kane's transportation back to the ship is depicted very briefly. The film shows Dallas and Lambert carrying Kane on a stretcher near the Nostromo, and Ash comes to meet them at the airlock of the ship. A heated discussion takes place between Ripley and Dallas at the airlock. Dallas reveals that a parasite has attached itself to Kane. Ripley insists on keeping Kane in quarantine according to safety protocols and refuses to let the trio aboard. Eventually, Ash manually opens the airlock and lets the trio in. Ripley is dismayed. It is presumed that more material was filmed regarding Kane's transportation to the Nostromo's airlock than what was shown in the final film. For example, Alien, the illustrated story presents an exterior shot of the airlock, unseen production pictures, and there is footage of Kane being transported inside the airlock on a stretcher. Thirty-three. In the final screenplay, after Kane is brought inside the Nostromo, Dallas removes his helmet. The scene also includes Parker and Brett, who take Kane to the infirmary. It is assumed that material was filmed for the scene after the airlock, as video footage of Kane being carried inside has been previously seen. However, no leaked material is available for this. 34. In the infirmary scene, Dallas and Ash cut off Kane's helmet and examine Kane. They try to remove the facehugger from Kane's face by detaching the parasite's legs, but the facehugger only tightens his grip and chokes Kane's throat. Kane is put in a diagnostic coffin. Dallas and Ash find out that facehugger has threaded a tentacle through Kane. A facehugger keeps Kane in a coma and alive at the same time. Ridley Scott planned to film the examination of the injured Kane by automated robots. For cost reasons, this idea was abandoned, 
and the examination of Cain and the removal of the helmet will be performed by Ash and Dallas. An interesting movie mistake is the lack of Cain's protective hood under the face hugger. A similar autodoc device is finally seen realized in the 2012 film Prometheus. The crew observes the infirmary and Lambert has a scene with Ripley. The crew watches the infirmary from the corridor through a glass window as Ash and Dallas examine Kane. In the original 1979 film, the scene is heavily cut. In the film, the crew just watches the situation in shock. In the director's cut, the scene is longer. In the scene, there is more dialogue from the crew and when Ripley arrives at the infirmary, Lambert attacks Ripley because Ripley didn't manage to let Dallas, Kane and Lampert out of the airlock inside the ship. The scene has also been cut in the director's cut. Throughout the scene, Lambert tells what happened on the derelict ship. Hey, Brad, look at that. Wait a minute. Jesus Christ. What is that, man? Hey, how the hell is he breathing? He's still alive or what? And why don't you guys freeze him? How come they don't freeze him? What, what's going on? Man? What the what fuck is, is going on? Hey, hey! You let him let him himself there! Regular. All right. Ripley, when I give an order, I expect to be obeyed. Ripley, when I give an order, I expect to be obeyed. Ripley, when I give an order, I expect to be obeyed. Even if it's against the law? You're goddamn right! Well, maybe she has a point, you know? Who the hell knows what that thing is? I'm gonna get that off him. How are we gonna get it oh, off? Just a minute, I'm gonna get some of this. Oh my God. What happened to him? What happened to him? I don't know. He's in that derelict. Look, we were inside and there was nothing around, so he volunteered to go down below. He found these egg things. And we lost communication, and next thing we bring him up, and he's got this thing on his face. In the final screenplay, Ripley comes to the infirmary when Kane is put in a diagnostic coffin. Ripley starts arguing with Dallas. Dallas inquires why Ripley was not allowed inside the ship, and Ripley in turn inquires why the quarantine laws were not followed. Lambert also comes to the infirmary and punches Ripley for not letting them on the ship. 36. Dallas decides that they will cut the face hugger off of Kane's face, though Ash is against the idea. Ash starts cutting the face hugger's limb, causing a yellow liquid to burst out of the limb, which begins to eat a hole in the floor. Dallas rushes out of the infirmary towards the stairs down to B deck, the crew following him. The fluid has eroded through B deck and continued down. The crew lands on C deck where the corrosion ends. The blood in the parasite is a corrosive acid that makes it difficult to kill. In the final screenplay, the events proceed as in the movie. Only the acid drips right next to Kane's head, starting to eat through the patient's examination table if Kane is lying down. In the screenplay, the crew speculates that the asbestos stopped the acid corrosion. Also, Facehugger's wound in the final screenplay heals almost immediately. In the original 1976 screenplay, the acid leaking from the facehugger is also toxic to breathe. In the novel, after the corrosion scene, the crew considers the possibility of cutting Kane with the LV426 planetoid. Then there would be no danger of the acid eating a hole in the ship. 37. After Facehugger's acid blood has burned through the covers of the Nostromo, Lambert returns to the hospital and asks Ash if the acid got on Kane. She continues to ask how they are going to get the creature out, but Ash has no suggestions. The rest of the crew arrive, worried about Kane's survival. Ripley looks at the X-ray scanner and notices a stain on Kane's lung, but Ash claims he doesn't know what it is. Finally, Dallas tells Parker and Brett to go back to repairs so they can leave the moon as soon as possible. There are different versions of the scene.
Did any of the acid get on him? Um, no, it didn't. Stop dripping. Yes. He'll do. Well, there has to be, um, some way to get this off hmm? his face. There has to be a way to get it off of his face. Yes, well, I don't think we ought to try that again. It didn't work out too well last time. Well, I'd better get some intravenous feeding going. So far, we don't know how much it's absorbed in the system. What's going on up here, anyway? I mean, is he gonna be right? You know, you should get on him. You gonna live? Huh? What's that, that stain on his lungs? I don't know, Ripley. Whatever it is, it's blocking the scanner. What do we do now? Let's go back to work and let's get out of here. In the novel, Dallas notices the stain on Kane's lung on the X-ray scanner, not Ripley. Ash guesses that the stain is from a damaged X-ray machine lens. This alternate scene was filmed but was cut. There is no publicly available material from the scene. Are you coming? Feels like we've been here for a month. Yeah, I know what you mean. They should listen to us and never come to this planet in the first place. Oh, right. Should have landed on this damn ball, I know that. Yeah, you're right. The sooner we get this thing passed up, the sooner we get out of here. Get my own shit.